What's up, gang? This is Kevin Bass from thedietwars.com, and I get this question a lot. How does dietary cholesterol affect blood cholesterol? And the reason I get this question so much is because in the popular media, the answer bounces around between, oh, there's a substantial effect and there's no effect. And that's because the answer to this question is actually uh, quite nuanced. Uh, it's a little more gray area than that, as you shall soon see. There most certainly is an effect of dietary cholesterol on blood cholesterol, but there is a caveat to that statement. I got this question in particular from, from Jeff Nippard recently. Um, I think two or three months ago, he said it in almost a laughing manner because the amount of misinformation and confusion about this is so substantial. Um, and uh, I think it took me two or three months to actually respond to him because, <laughs> because, uh, well, first of all, this question is, as I pointed out, confusing. Second, I didn't think I had much to say to him about it, but I ended up writing a response to him after two or three months. I was like, I need to get this out of the way and actually send him a response. And what I responded with uh, surprised me uh, in terms of how much knowledge we actually do have about this question and how interesting this knowledge is. And so I wanted to share that with you guys. So we're going to go do that. So I'm going to read that. I'm doing, I'm doing a uh, PowerPoint presentation this time style. We'll see how that works. Uh, how dietary cholesterol affects blood cholesterol. And in each, in each slide, there's going to be a figure. And in most cases, there's also going to be a um, reference as well. So a PubMed link. I think on one or two slides, it didn't include the PubMed link. Um, that will be included in the description. Uh, under the caption on either Instagram or on YouTube. Uh, and as well, it will also be included on the podcast description so that you can then uh, either looking at the YouTube link or looking at the description, find these studies and then make sure for yourself that I'm reporting this correctly, which I, which I of course am. But if you want to look into more detail, uh, you can do so using those links. And so without further ado, let's get to it. So the best way to first start approaching this question is to look at what happens when you completely block cholesterol absorption in the intestine. So the question is, is how does dietary cholesterol affect blood cholesterol? Well, if you totally block the absorption of dietary cholesterol, that's a very quick and rapid answer, at least the beginning of an answer to this question. So we do that through a drug called azetamibe. The first studies on azetamibe were published in the early 2000s, I believe in 2005, the first human trials that fully characterize the dose response effect of azetamibe. Um, this is from 2001, but in any case, it is in the early 2000s that the first data on the dose response of azetamide was published under the name of Zedia. That's the brand name. And in this figure, as you can see, uh, if you give, you know, a quarter of a milligram, you get about a 10% reduction on average in this particular study of a 10% reduction in LDL cholesterol. And as you scale up to 10 milligrams, which is a typical dose used in typical clinical practice, you get up to about 18 to 19% reduction in LDLC blood cholesterol, blood cholesterol in the blood. What this demonstrates is two things. Uh, let's start out with the smaller, less important thing. Over time, there's no adaptation to the body to azetamibe. Azetamibe continues to cause blood cholesterol to stay low. But the much, much, much more interesting part that we learned from this study is that azetamibe 
decreases blood cholesterol by 20%. That is to say, with a complete blockade, a complete blockade of transport of cholesterol from the intestine to the body, into the blood, a complete blockade of that process causes a 20% reduction in blood cholesterol. That is to say, about 20% of your blood LDL cholesterol on average, 20%. And by the way, LDL cholesterol, and I know that people are going to get upset with this statement. It's the truth. LDL cholesterol is, uh, it's not the bad cholesterol. It's the worse cholesterol. LD HDLC is in its own way also bad. Uh, but LDLC is the fraction of cholesterol that is quote unquote bad that your cardiologist wants to target. 20% of that is due, on average, 20% of that is due to dietary cholesterol. So 20% of your cholesterol in your blood, your LDL cholesterol that your cardiologist is worried about, comes from dietary cholesterol. So that is the first step in answering this question. 20% of your blood cholesterol is from dietary cholesterol. And that's much more than many people know. Many people believe that none of your LDL cholesterol comes from dietary cholesterol. This is in fact incorrect. If you excluded all dietary cholesterol and you changed nothing else in your diet, which would be impossible because you'd have to extract all the LDL cholesterol out of all the chicken, out of all the eggs, out of all the beef, out of all the pork, out of all the milk, out of all the whatever animal product that you are consuming, you'd have to take it out and then keep everything else the exact same, which you'd need a lab to do that. And I don't know if any lab could even do that. You'd have to eat like a chicken chicken smoothie and a chicken and a beef smoothie because it'd all be degraded into uh, proteins that uh, you'd have to then drink because you'd have already extracted all, chemically all of the cholesterol. It's not possible. But if you were able to do that, this would be the result. Okay. And another way of looking at this is azetamibe in, in more or less. Azetamibe is a pharmacological vegan diet in the sense that it entirely excludes dietary cholesterol. Of course, vegan diets do a lot more than simply exclude dietary cholesterol. So in that sense, it's not entirely equivalent, but in the sense that vegan diets are the pretty much the only way to exclude dietary cholesterol. Azetamibe is the drug form of a vegan diet as far as dietary cholesterol is concerned. And the effect is quite pronounced. About 20% of your LDL cholesterol comes from dietary cholesterol. Okay, your blood LDL cholesterol. Okay. That said, that said, the answer is actually a bit more complicated. Why? Because when you first start consuming cholesterol, say you eat 100 milligrams of dietary cholesterol, that cholesterol is absorbed very rapidly. Most of it is, or much of it is absorbed, and it turns into blood cholesterol. But for the next 900 milligrams of cholesterol, say, that is absorbed much less readily so that, in fact, dietary cholesterol follows a, uh, an, a, a, a you get a mar marginal increases in blood cholesterol for every additional increment, incremental increase in dietary cholesterol. So you get a rapid increase in blood cholesterol at the beginning of your dietary cholesterol and take it the smallest dose above zero. And then it plateaus so that when you start eating a ton of dietary cholesterol, it doesn't change your blood cholesterol any. Okay. So that's why when you look at the dietary studies, and here is a graph a meta regression, or this is not the meta regression itself, but this is a figure that uh, captures some of the data points that were used for a meta regression. It's a particular statistical analysis to uh, add different studies together to try to find an, a dose response relationship in the case of dietary cholesterol and uh, blood cholesterol. That is why you see in many cases a kind of, again, 
a, a rapid increase in LDL cholesterol at the very smallest doses of dietary cholesterol increase. Okay, and then for every additional increase, you get not much of an increase in blood cholesterol. Okay, because it gets saturated. Part of the reason that this graph is so noisy is for um, partly for that reason, uh, but it's also partly because it's a change in cholesterol intake in this graph. And that is very highly dependent on the baseline diet. So if you're taking in no cholesterol in your diet, you might get a really large increase in LDL cholesterol. But if you're taking already 1,000 milligrams of, of cholesterol per day, dietary cholesterol in the diet, you're not going to get much of an increase at all, no matter how much you increase your dietary cholesterol. So the, no, the, the nutrition studies are incredibly noisy in this respect because they don't take into account baseline cholesterol intake. Many of them do not. Okay? The second reason is that there's a lot of noise because there's a wide variation among individuals. And this is the other aspect of the story for which things start to get more complicated. There's a wide variation between individuals in terms of how much dietary cholesterol they can turn into blood cholesterol. So-called hyper-responders, they don't actually get this tapering off of their dietary cholesterol, this plateauing with further increases in dietary cholesterol. That effect there isn't a reduced effect on their blood cholesterol as you get higher and higher concentrations. It continues to stay linear so that every increase in dietary cholesterol causes a, uh, an equivalent increase in blood cholesterol. And these are the so-called hyper-responders. And so some of these studies that I'm showing up here have a different um, – some have a lot of hyper-responders, some have fewer hyper-responders. So this is a, an additional source of noise in this literature. That's why this – this literature is so noisy. Thankfully, we have the pharmaceutical studies to illustrate that, uh, again, in fact, about 20% of your dietary cholesterol, um, sorry, 20% of your blood cholesterol is from dietary cholesterol. So that's very useful. But another useful thing to really illustrate this point on hyper responders is this very interesting study on ketogenic dieters. So among these ketogenic dieters, they saw incredibly large increases in LDL cholesterol, very problematic increases in LDL cholesterol. And this study was published, I think, either last year or in 2020. And then in, in order to mitigate that increase, they switched them onto a lower fat diet, not a ketogenic diet, and they checked, okay, your LDL cholesterol was 683, which is abysmal. Let's put you on a low-fat diet. It's 62 or 65, right? So that's what they did in this study with five different patients. In this case, they only have three of these patients on the screen just because it fit into the slide a little bit better. But the interesting thing is that one of these patients refused to, to quit, quit consuming the ketogenic diet. They refused to say, I'm not quitting this. I love this ketogenic diet. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take Zetia, Azetamibe, the drug I talked about at the beginning of this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, take Azetamibe and we'll see what happens. And so their LDL cholesterol went all the way from 243 milligrams per deciliter all the way down to 105. And that's almost a two-thirds decrease or almost up. It's about a 65% decrease almost a 65% decrease, not a 20% decrease, a 65% decrease. And that's because this person was one of those people for whom um, dietary cholesterol increases does not cause a plateau in increases in blood cholesterol. So that for every increase in dietary cholesterol, their blood cholesterol kept going up and up and up and up. Okay, it didn't level off. Some people are like that. So that the more dietary cholesterol they consume, the more 
their blood cholesterol will increase. And this is probably because the transporter for dietary cholesterol in these people is hyperactive or present in larger quantities for reasons that are not yet clear to um, researchers. But we do know these people exist, and it's about 20% of these people who have these especially large responses to dietary cholesterol. Okay. And to circle back, let's go to another azetamibe study. Oh, before we do that, I actually want to read an extract from the paper from which I had that table I just presented. So they write, the extraordinary response of the third patient to azetamibe, which normally reduces LDL cholesterol by 15 to 20%, suggested that he was a hyperabsorber of dietary cholesterol. This could result from a gain of function of the cholesterol transporter neiman pick c C1-like protein 1, NPC1L1. Although this was not detected by DNA sequencing, and of course it doesn't need to be detected by DNA sequencing, I'll just put that in there because um, it could be um, changes in, in regulatory regions that cause a hyperexpression of, of uh, NPC1L1, and that wouldn't be generally detected by DNA sequencing, although it depends on what kind of DNA sequencing you're doing. But in any case, let's continue reading. It is possible that he, like some of the other patients, may have had a mutation in a novel gene not known to be associated with dyslipidemia. Understanding the basic physiology leading to exuberant LDL elevation in this patient and in others will require metabolic studies to assess cholesterol uptake, lipoprotein uptake, and intestinal assessment of MPC1L1. So just as a side note, it's very interesting here that the increase in this hyper-responder to a ketogenic diet, this increase in LDL cholesterol and this hyper-responder to the ketogenic diet was mediated by dietary cholesterol which uh, there's a theory going around by this Harvard med student named uh, Nick Norwitz and uh, one of his buddies, uh, Dave Feldman. They think that uh, it's called the lipid, uh, I can't even, the lipid energy model. And they think that the utilization of fatty acids and, and some other things I don't have time to talk about here are responsible for the large LDL increases on people for people on a ketogenic diet. However, what this study clearly indicates is that at least in some of those people, this increase in LDL cholesterol is not mediated through such a mechanism. It's mediated just through dietary cholesterol uptake. Yet, uh, despite the fact that we know this, uh, Nick and uh, Dave don't yet share this with people and people need to know this because um, if they did know this, then they could on a ketogenic diet radically reduce their LDL cholesterol and cardiovascular disease risk. And by the way, azetamibe has very, very, very few, if, if any, but basically no side effects. The person who I've talked to recent about, recently about this, who's an expert in the field says it has no side effects. And I'm on azetamibe. I love azetamibe. But anyway, let's go on to the next study because this is extremely interesting. So in one study, they gave patients azetamibe and there was two groups, poor responders and, and good responders. Among the good responders, they got about a 30% reduction, a 30% reduction in LDL cholesterol as a result of azetamibe. And the poor responders, maybe about a 10 to 15% reduction. And what these people actually are, these poor responders versus responders, it's actually hyper responders. That's the same people who respond highly to dietary cholesterol. Those people are the responders in this study. So the people who respond very strongly to azetamibe are also gonna be the same people who are gonna respond very strongly to dietary cholesterol. And the people who do not respond to dietary cholesterol very well, it doesn't change their LDL cholesterol much, are not going to respond well to azetamide. And you can actually quantify this by looking at I think, st stanols and sterols in the blood, plant, plant sterols and stanols in the blood, and then run an assay and then be able to figure who's going to be a good responder and who's not. You can do that in clinical practice and some doctors do that, although this, as far as I know, not a standard practice yet. Interestingly, 
And here's maybe one of the take home messages. If you're already an omnivore, going back to what we saw before, if you're already an omnivore, reducing your dietary cholesterol is, is not going to help much until you get close to zero. Likewise, increasing it is not going to hurt much unless you're a hyper responder. And if you're a hyper responder, it'll hurt more in your blood cholesterol. And the only way to know this is by actually looking at your lipid panels and comparing to how much dietary cholesterol that you eat. And so that's the story. To summarize, about 20% of your blood cholesterol, LDL, of your LDL fraction of your blood cholesterol, about 20% of that comes from dietary cholesterol. Most of that 20% comes from the, you know, the first few hundred milligrams of dietary cholesterol that you're consuming. And the more that you consume after that, it doesn't have much effect on your, on your blood cholesterol. So you, the only way to actually reduce your dietary cholesterol to reduce your blood cholesterol would be to go nearly vegan, to, redu to restrict almost all dietary cholesterol. Reducing, restricting some isn't going to help very much. And adding some is not going to help. It's not going to hurt very much. Although... However, there are cases in which about 20% of the population work can hurt a lot more. And, and to be honest, that 20%, it's not really a sharp cutoff between that 20% and the rest of the 80%. It's really a big gradation of different responses to dietary cholesterol. So some people see more of a response and some, some less. But on average, about 20% of your total blood cholesterol is accounted for by dietary cholesterol. And one of the best and easiest ways to do this without like having to radically change your diet to reduce your blood cholesterol is to take a Zetamod, about 10 milligrams a day, and there's minimal side effects. On the other hand, you can go vegan if that is your preference. And uh, let's see if we have anything else. And that's all we have for today. And I hope that was um, informative to you. And I hope you got something out of that. If you did, and if you like this content, please leave a review on iTunes, uh, however else you leave podcast reviews, uh, make a comment on the YouTube channel, like it, share it as much as possible because people need to know this information. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at Kevin and Bass. That's K-E-V-I-N in Bass. That's two N's, K-E-V-I-N-N-B-A-S-S. -S -S. And uh, subscribe here to this YouTube channel. And, of course, check out the website, thedietwars.com. You can also find me on Patreon. That would be super, super helpful to support me. Some people have seen the car that I drive. I should like to upgrade that. It's a 1997 Dodge Caravan. If you want to help me upgrade my 1997 Dodge Caravan, um, that would be fantastic. You can find me on Patreon at Kevin in Bass, the same thing as everything else. I'm now offering 20 minutes a month of consultations. If you sign up for the highest tier on Patreon, meaning consultations are simply on the stuff I already talked about. So if I talk about some of the stuff that you're interested in, if I've talked about it recently, see within the past you know, year or two, I can, I can elaborate on it in greater detail for you. If you have a question that's interesting, I can look it up and then talk to you about it the next month that we talk. And uh, yeah, you can you can get one-on-one uh, -on -one access to me. It usually ends up being more than twenty minutes because you know I'm not super uh, caught up on the time. So yeah, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you thought this was helpful or not, and let me know what kind of videos you want to see. Peace out, brothers.